Amen. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. I want to read today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, as we close out our series uh, in the Gospel of Mark, looking at the stories of Jesus. And I'm going to begin here in uh, chapter 16 with verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from us for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he arose early on the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. And after these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe him. them. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves, and they were reclining at table. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirm the message by accompanying signs. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So my project over the last year, since Easter of last year, was to take us on a journey through the entirety of the scriptures and hit the highlights and show how uh, all of it is interconnected, how, the, as St. Augustine said, how the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, and the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed to show the relationship between promise and fulfillment and through the relationship between problem and solution as well. It's so unfortunate to me that in so many ways we have uh, used the Scriptures uh, even in the church so oftentimes and just use the scriptures as metaphors and as symbols for uh, things that we want and things that we're comfortable with and, and how to be successful in this life. Or, uh, and we so often we have deformed the message of the Bible to make us more comfortable with our self-centered desires in this fleeting and falling world. But the Bible is about the life that really is life, that may look like anything but success to this fallen world. It's about the one who is the author of life and what he has done to deliver us from the delusion of sin and death. It's not about how God simply makes for us 
a place in heaven apart from earth. It's about how God restores paradise on earth by renewing us in his image and after his likeness in true holiness and righteousness, as Paul writes in Ephesians 4. Humanity started in the Garden of Eden, seduced by the serpent, that sinister seraphim. The image of God in us was distorted and corrupted by sin. The penalty was death and exile from Eden to a life of frustration and futility with creation itself subjected to the curse. Humanity captive to the sway of the serpent slithering farther and farther toward destruction and eternal chaos. Why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus die? He died to deal with sin, to defeat the devil, to break the terrifying power of death's grip on the human heart. Jesus died to deliver us from the fear that drives us to cling to life in this world at any cost and drives us to exalt self above all else as if physical death is the worst thing that can happen to us. Jesus died and rose again to deliver us from death's delusion, to show that clinging to self and its comfort and security in this fallen world is to cling to a cloud, a vapor that is bound to vanish in the heat of God's judgment. Jesus died to deliver us from the illusion. A mirage in the desert, if you will, that we can create paradise for ourselves on our own terms only to find ourselves in hell on earth and in eternity. Jesus died to vanquish that illusion, to destroy the power of hell, and to break the spell of the devil over us, and to crush the serpent's head. Jesus died to cancel the debt of sin by paying its wages, the wages of death that he did not owe. As Charles Wesley said, he died to break the power of canceled sin, to set his prisoners free. The dark delusion of sin and death was exposed by the light and power of his resurrection. Because the one who walked on water also walked out of the tomb and so doing he trampled on the head of the serpent and all the anti-creation forces of the abyss. He burst forth from the tomb and from the grip of all the power of hell and the curse of the corruption on this fallen world with new creation life for all who believe. Hallelujah. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verses 15 and 17, he said, He died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for Him who for their sake died and was raised. In verse 17 he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. Hallelujah. This is bad news for the forces of sin and death and bad news for those who continue to cling to the fulfillment of the desires of the flesh in this world. But it is good news for sinners who turn from sin and death to receive new life in Christ through forgiveness of sins and through the new birth. As Mark 16, 15 indicates, even though this is maybe not part of the original text of Mark, and that's debatable, but even if it's not, it captures the essence of other places of Scripture where Jesus, it says, tells all of His apostles to go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation, to the whole creation. It's good news for all people everywhere and good news for all creation. As Paul says, the whole creation... And Romans 8 is hoping and longing for our full redemption in the resurrection to come when we will be fully conformed to the image of Christ, which is to be fully restored into the image and likeness of God, which will then restore the flow of God's blessing 
into creation as far as the curse is found. Joy to the world. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make His blessings flow far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found. Jesus died and rose again to restore the beauty, justice, and peace of a real paradise and to spread the healing blessing of God to the rest of the world so God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just to secure us a place in heaven. You know, there's been debate in the last few weeks with this coronavirus about whether Christianity offers any answers about the coronavirus. And uh, a famous uh, scholar and theologian had a Time article, a man that I respect greatly, and I, I was confused and baffled by uh, what he had written there, but he says, Christianity offers no answers to the coronavirus, and it was never meant to. But I know, I know him well, I know his writings well, I know that he knows better. I know that he knows better. And I know that he knows this, and I know he will agree. Easter is the answer to the coronavirus and to all disease and death because Jesus' death and resurrection solves the problem of the pandemic of sin that got us into this mess and quarantine from Eden in the first place. The solution to sin is the righteousness of Christ and He invites us to stop being part of the problem and participate in the solution not just to avoid the contamination, but to spread the healing power of His holiness, to share the good news with the whole creation. Easter is an invitation to turn from the forces of sin and death and turn to the author of life who by dying and rising again conquered death and created new life, new creation life. For all who believe. You know, there are a lot of folks now that they're expressing their frustration that uh, with this virus, uh, people are refusing to be a part of the solution and they're remaining part of the problem and they're not listening to the authorities. Well, Easter is an invitation for us to stop being part of the problem and to become a part of the solution through the grace of God and through the power of Christ's death and the power of His resurrection. Easter is an invitation for us to turn to God and to be a part of His solution. The solution that's not just for souls to get to heaven, but for the healing of the whole world. Do you want to be a part of the solution? Do we want to be a part of the solution? Then if we do, we need to trust in Jesus. Become a part of His body on earth to spread His healing love. We need to trust Him now and every day from now. We need to take our place and fulfill our role in the body of Christ. We need to trust Him to make Him and His mission our top priority. We need to live in the means of grace and spend time in prayer and in His Word daily. We need to worship Him with God's people weekly. We need to be washed in the waters of baptism. We need to feast on His body and blood. We need to use the gifts that God has given us to build up His body on earth and to share the good news of His love and to reveal His mercy to a sin-sick and dying world. Can I get an amen? And you know what? You know what? That as we do that, if we will do that, God's healing power, as Mark indicated, God's healing power through Jesus Christ will be with us. It'll work in us and it'll work through us to heal sin-sick hearts and to renew a fallen and decaying world. Easter is the answer. Easter is the answer. 
The good news is, is that there really is a personal God who cares about us, so much so that He sent His only begotten Son, the Creator Himself, the Word that became flesh, the Word through whom God created everything, and the Creator died to redeem and to save His whole creation, and He invites us, you and me, you and me, to be a part of that. To be a part of that solution. Easter is the answer. The only question is, will we answer Easter's call for us to be a part of the solution that God has wrought in the death and the resurrection of His Son? Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of everything, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done for us in Jesus. I pray, Lord, today that anyone here still living under the delusion of death and sin, I pray today that you will open their eyes. For those, Lord, today, if we're remaining in any way a part of the problem, Make us part of the solution today by your grace, through the power of Christ's death and through his glorious resurrection. Sweep us into your mission in this world to renew and to redeem and to deliver all the creation, to save souls, to set prisoners free, to deliver captives, to bring true peace and justice and righteousness into this world. Help us, Lord, to be a part of your solution and to no longer be part of the problem. I pray, Lord, that this invitation of Easter is answered by all who hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.